none of it really stands out, no matter how personalized that email or that tweet or whatever might seem. Right. Uh, you know, it's all automated. So I was trying to get personal with my clients and employees. And then I decided to, to automate it and do it as a business. So that's what handwritten is. Are you looking to create better relationships with your clients or maybe to find the type of communication that will get your customers or your prospects to react the most? Today, we are talking about a specific type of communication that can really set you apart from other brands in your industry. My guest today is David Walks, and we're talking about some really good stuff, and we're going old school. I'll tell you a little bit about David. By the way, when I say old school, I don't mean old school like technology-wise, old school in the concept-wise, because actually what David is doing is pretty high tech. Here's what it is. He's got a company called Handwritten, and it's bringing back the lost art of letter writing through scalable robot-based solutions that get this, write your notes in pen. It's a robot writing notes for you in pen. And he developed this as a platform so that you could send notes from your CRM system. So this thing will integrate with your CRM so that you can actually automate these letters to be sent to your customers, to your prospects. It's so awesome. I'm so excited. I'm signing up for it right now today. You're going to hear all about it, but more importantly, you're going to hear about where are the places that you should be doing this? Where are the places that you can get the most ROI in terms of brand ROI, relationship ROI, and of course, revenue ROI. That's what we're talking about today. He's got some of the greatest brands that are using this service, um, major mailboxes, e-commerce giants, nonprofits, all kinds of professionals. It's really changing the way that these brands connect with their people. And it's awesome. And we're also talking about being an entrepreneur and starting something like this. What are the challenges? What have the challenges been, especially through a time that we've had in this last year? So you're going to enjoy this interview so much. I know you will. And I hope that at the end of it, whether you use his service or not, you're going to rethink how you communicate to your prospects and to your customers beyond sending an email or a text. David, welcome to the show. I am so excited to have you on today. We're going to talk about everything that's, that's you know, <laughs> awesome about relating to your customers and building better relationships. But what's so cool is that we're going to talk about it in a, a unique way that I don't know if many businesses are even thinking about this right now. So welcome. Thanks so much, Summer. This is uh, awesome. I'm so happy to be on your show. We kind of run in similar circles. So it's, it's awesome to connect this way. Yes, I totally agree. So before we dive into what you're doing and, and all the advice that you're going to give our listeners, how did you, how did you start your business? And like, what, what kind of led up to this? Well, it's directly related. So um, back in 2004, I started a text messaging company. This is before the iPhone. Um, okay. I started a text messaging company that would send out information on real estate. Um, so you drive by a house, you text in for info on a house, you get back the info on the house on their phone, and then the realtor would get the lead. And we quickly expanded beyond realtors to just general businesses, working with brands like Marie Claire Magazine, Abercrombie & Fitch, Sam's Club, Office Max. And we were sending about a million text messages a day, which was great. Uh, and then we pivoted and we started doing stuff uh, using push notifications and all that. And then I sold that company and I wanted to send my clients and my employees thank you notes for being with me throughout that journey. And I thought a thank you note because when I went into my salespeople's offices, I'd see the thank you notes sitting on their desk and, you know, from, from, from their clients. And I saw that, you know, these things really kind of stuck around longer than the text messages we were pushing. So <laughs> we, uh, I, I sat down and I started writing thank you notes and quickly my hand started cramping up or I got distracted or screwed up a note and had to grab another one. And it was just a very tedious process. And so that's where handwritten my current venture came from. 
And then, you know, in addition to just kind of seeing handwritten notes on the desk, you know, on the bookshelves behind my, my employees' desks and stuff like that, I kind of realized people, you know, I was unfortunately part of the problem with my last company because we were contributing to the messaging glut, the electronic messaging glut that everybody's going through right now, where people are really drowning in electronic communication, whether it's text messages where the average, you know, 35 year old sends or receives 1600 a month or emails, you know, there's stats floating around that saying that say uh, people spend about 25% of their work day managing their text, their emails. And then you add all the other things on it, right? Like you add Slack and Twitter and Facebook and all these different messaging forms, people are kind of drowning in messaging and they're just None of it really stands out, no matter how personalized that email or that tweet or whatever might seem, it's, right. you know, it's all automated. So I was trying to get personal with my clients and employees, and then I decided to, to automate it and do it as a business. So that's what handwritten is. You know, it's so true because I, I think of that myself when I think of how inundated my inbox gets and the work it takes to get it to inbox zero. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's, not, and it's not that the messages aren't great or important. You know, sometimes I, if the subject line has to be so good for me to open it, but it is really that there's just so much of it and you get overwhelmed. And there's something, especially today, about getting something in the mail, and especially if it's handwritten, that you're just like, oh, well, this is special. This is, it just immediately has a different type of a feeling. Yeah, and, and kudos to you for inbox zero, because I do inbox zero for like, three days and it's bliss. And then quickly I'm back to inbox yes. 10,000. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's the thing about it is, you know, for instance, I was on, I was uh, interviewing somebody today over Zoom and because I was running between meetings, I actually did it from my car. So I was staring at my cell phone, interviewing this person for a job. And as I'm talking to him, it's just like constant, the, the little notification of, of email notifications pop up one after the other, after the other, it's like once every 10 seconds. And, you know, yeah. it all just becomes noise. And what I've learned being on this side, you know, on the marketer side, even the most personalized email, I'm not talking about MailChimp. I'm talking about, you know, something that looks like it comes from Outlook. And there's a lot of good ser services that do that, like Persist IQ and Prospect.io and all these automation systems that make it seem like you're sending an email to somebody um, naturally, but it's all automated. I know all those systems exist. So when I start getting emails from salesperson A or salesperson B, I'm just like, oh, whatever. These are totally fake, even though they look like they came from that person's Outlook or Gmail or whatever, you know, they're totally fake. So you discount those. And now, you know, to your point, like you just basically spend all day, just like delete, delete, delete. You don't even look at it. Maybe you read the little preview that pops up in your iPhone or whatever, but you don't actually, you know, nobody has the time to read all right. this. So, so no, it's so true. Kind of get, get around is create something that not only is read, but it's treasured. And, you know, I'm on the show, obviously, to promote my company, but more so, the main reason I'm here is just to talk about handwritten notes in general. And just one quick example, I, I didn't know who this client was. We have, we're fortunate to have a lot of clients, some big, some small, but this one I thought was a law firm. It turned out it's a piano tuner outside of pencil, outside of Philadelphia. And so this guy's in your house once a year to tune a piano. A piano only needs to get tuned once a year. And when he's, after he, he meets with you, his system automatically uses our system to send a handwritten note. Thank you. Follow up. And, you know, we really appreciate your business. And then when he's in your house a year later, a year later, he sees those handwritten notes still on pianos or on refrigerators, you know, stuck to the refrigerator. Wow. Then, you know, when was the last time you printed out an email and stuck it to your refrigerator or gosh, your piano or whatever? Or when was the last time you took a screenshot of a text message and printed that out and stuck it to anything? Like never, Exactly. Right? Exactly. Like, but well, so handwritten notes are, are not only read, but they're savored, they're treasured. Totally. And that's what they're trying to tie into. Well, I have a confession. So probably about, 
I know the value of this, right? Because I've seen it work before. And so I had my assistant at the time, I had her spending hours, hours each week writing handwritten notes. So when you talked about like the hand cramping and the this and the that and whatever, and I'm like, gosh, does it really take you that long? Well, after a while, you know, my hand's cramping because people aren't used to writing that much. And we stopped doing it just because it was like, okay, well, this is maybe taking too much time or had I known about your, which now I'm going to be like, all right, we're, we're signing up (laughs) because it did make a difference because people get excited. You know what I mean? And so that's my confession is that I should have, I should have stuck with it, but now it's, it's easier to, to do that because you have a service that does it. Because I think that, I don't think anyone would argue that it's a bad idea to send a handwritten note. I think they would say, but I have so many things that I have to do. I can't sit there and write. I can't have my team writing all of that. That's a lot. You know what I mean? There'd be a, so many excuses of why they can't do it. And it kind of seems like you're, you've kind of answered all of those objections with handwritten. Yeah, we're trying. I mean, so just to kind of talk about what we do is we use... So we use a lot of technology to do something really simple, which is send a pen note. But the way we do it is you go on our website or you upload a spreadsheet uh, to our website or you type one in on our website or you use our app and you type a note in on our app or you integrate with like Zapier for for the people on your uh, that listen to your show. If they know what Zapier is, it's super cool. It allows you to integrate with a bunch of stuff really simply. Love, so, love Zapier, yes. Oh, if I didn't work for Handwritten, I'd go work for them. I think they're <laughs> Oh, we use them in everything. Yes, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so anyway, so we, we integrate with all these ways to get your notes into our system. And the ideal client is one that can automate it because even if you know we do everything else, you still have to get us the message. So the whole the idea is let's automate 100% of this. Once we get your note in our system, then how do we write it? And the way we do that is we actually build robots there. Um, you know, this is the real deal. We, we start with 3D printers and laser cutters and conveyor belts. So we build up these robots. We've got about 115 of them currently. Um, each robot holds a typical blue ballpoint pen. It's a Pilot G2 ballpoint. You can pick those up at staples or whatever. And then they write out the notes and the handwriting style of your choice. And then we also write out the envelope. And then, you know, if there's an insert, like a business card or a gift card to Starbucks or something like that, we can include that too. And then we just mail the whole thing. So what we've done is we've taken something very simple and made it insanely complicated as far as the business goes. But, you know, the whole idea of the business was to be something I wanted to use. And that's that's how it ended up the way it ended up. And so one of the, one of the things people might say is, oh, well, you know, does it look real? And that's probably our biggest objection prior to seeing the end result. And I think it looks very real. The only time it doesn't look real is if you hand it to somebody and you say, hey, do you think this note looks like it's written by a robot? Uh, <laughs> so you hand the note to somebody or you send it to somebody and say, hey, what did you think of the note I sent you? They said, oh, wow, that was very thoughtful. So yeah, I think, I think under normal scrutiny, it looks in, in, insanely real. I see these things day in, day out. So um, when I see one that's written in a new handwriting style, like maybe you, Summer, have a very particular handwriting style and you want people to see it in your writing, when, when we write in those handwriting styles that I'm not familiar with and I see it coming off the machine, I'm flabbergasted and I see it coming off the machine. So, um, yeah, I mean, and you can go to handwritten.com and I can tell your listeners later how to get a whole bunch of free samples and stuff like that. But we, we work very, very hard to make sure that the end result is incredibly real. You know, we vary the spacing between lines we make the left margin kind of jitter in and out. Like, in other words, you don't start exactly on a, on a razor's edge when you write your notes on the left-hand margin. You kind of are a little bit sloppy, so we're a little bit sloppy too. Um, so like little stuff like that. We have a character variation. Two L's together look different than two L's separate. Two T's, you know, do you cross your two T's with one crossbar or two? you know, S at the beginning of the word, S at the end of the word, all those types of things um, go into our system. So it creates a very, very realistic output. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love that so much. 
So one of one question that I have in terms of implement implementing these into your business are the you know what are what are the successful touch points that you've seen? Is it you know right after you've had that first conversation with a lead on the phone? Is it after um, a service or project has been completed? Is it to cold, you know, do some outbound marketing? What are some of the places, I, I know you can use them in all those ways, but what are some like, what are some changes and success stories you've seen and the different touch points that you, your clients are using them in? Yeah, for sure. So all of the above, with the exception of cold, I think, because the problem, I, I guess it depends on what you're selling, but with cold, you know, it's going to get expensive because yeah. when we do handwritten notes, you know, you can't really compare it to junk mail or, or bulk mail because we write, we have to write on something. So we start off with a printed piece, just like a bulk mail is a printed piece. And then we have to add handwriting on top of it. So it's always going to be more expensive than bulk mail. Additionally, a bulk mail is like a flimsy, glossy piece of paper. We're writing a nice, thick, toothy stationery. That's going to be more expensive. And then we use real real stamps, you know, which cost 55 cents each versus a bulk rate. Right. So, you know, if you're looking to blast a zip code or something, we'll do it for you, but it, it could just get very expensive. For follow-up, like what you said, that's an excellent use case. We do it here at Handwritten. A lot of our clients do it. In fact, our biggest client does it. Um, they're a solar panel installer in the southeastern seaboard, and they, they they just must be blown up because when we started with them, they were doing 500 notes a month, and now they're like doing 500 notes a day, thanking people for allowing them to come in and price out their solar their their solar roof solution or whatever. So, you know, and unfortunately they don't they don't share a success story with us. You know, we're kind of out of the loop on the ROI, but all we know is they've been growing their investment with us over the last few years. So I know it works. With thank you, I, you know, I get very kind of uh, dogmatic about thank you. People say, well, what's the ROI of sending a thank you note? And I'm like, What's the ROI of not sending a thank you note? You know, when <laughs> we have, we, we, we are in a culture now that's so hands-off and has such an entitled attitude of, you know, you bought something from me, I'll never talk to you again. You know, to yeah. take, take two minutes out or whatever the cost is to use our service and send somebody a thank you note when there's unlimited you know, we live in a world where everything has um, an alternative. You know, if you buy something, you could buy it on Amazon and, and there'd be 10 trillion versions of that or Alibaba. Or if you're using a service, there's 25 of them on G2 Crowd or Yelp or whatever. So people have unlimited transparency and unlimited options. And the fact that they chose you is really a gift. So like, why not send them a thank you note thanking them for a couple bucks or whatever? So that's what I think about that. But there are a lot of cases that say, you know, it increases brand loyalty and all that. I just think it's the right thing to do in this, you know, in this day and age. We have one client, they're an online furniture brand, and they have been using us. And I, we were on a call, an integration call, talking about how to further integrate with their, their e-commerce system. And I said, well, how's it going? And they said, well, just yesterday somebody called up, <laughs> I don't know if this is a good example or bad, somebody <laughs> called up their customer service in tears because the handwritten note meant so much to them that they felt so, you know, they thought it was so thoughtful that they were in tears. I think a lot of that has to do with COVID and the fact that people are extra isolated right now. And, um, you know, there's a lot of reasons to send a handwritten note and probably now more so than, more so than ever just because people are so alone. So, so, you know, just sending it as a thank you, I think cannot be understated or, or sorry, overstated. And then the, another one I'd like to bring up is um, Winbacks. This one I do have a really good story on. So Ooh, yeah. we have a customer that is a, or really saying we're sorry. Um, we have a customer that does office snacks. So you can sign up and they'll send, snack boxes to your office twice a month so that you know you have nutritious options for your employees to grab when they're when they're looking for a munch so 
what they found was if they screwed up the snack box, they would send the appropriate snack box and some swag and a handwritten note apologizing for all that. And what they found is if they sent a handwritten note, and obviously the swag does not hurt, those customers had a higher lifetime value than those customers that never had a screw up in the first place. So then naturally, what they do is they screw up with everybody. They just, you know, intentionally screw up, intentionally send them, you know, the, the correct box and send them a handwritten note and raise overall lifetime value of everybody. So, you know, and we've seen that ourselves at handwritten too. When we screw up, we, you know, we bend over backwards to make it right, you know. So that's been a big one. Um, and then we also do a lot of inbox. So when you get a mattress from an online brand, it might have our handwritten notes in it or um, a snack box or whatever. Then all those notes get, not only are they read, but sometimes we find them on Instagram and Twitter and stuff like that. People, people tend to uh, be kind of amazed that there's a little personal handwritten note in there. So they, uh, they, they tend to post it, which is, which is a nice viral aspect. The last one is offers. So sending out like a special offer around the holidays or, or whatever, you know, just to pr- uh, promotion type outreach. What we find is those offers have about a five time higher response rate if it's included with a handwritten note than if it's just on a print piece or something like that. Because handwritten note envelopes get opened 300% greater than a regular envelope because of that, you know, they've just naturally read more. And then the response rate to handwritten notes is much higher than just a printed, printed letter. So we have one bespoke suit company where you kind of like measure yourself, send them your measurements, they'll make you a suit. They send a uh, handwritten note coupons out around the holiday and they, they get like an 18% redemption rate when typically that redemption rate is closer to like 3% or something. Wow. Well, you know, it makes, it makes so much sense. Like there's also, there's a lot of competition in right now and people have the opportunity to get seen more because of technology and and the way that you can, you know, reach a ton more people than you used to be able to. And so you do, you need to do something that stands out. And most people, the reason, you know, I know for me, you have to have that personal connection in order to want to do business again with, with a brand. And that immediately, I mean, if I were shopping like, you know, different, I don't know, say I'm like out car shopping, (laughs) I'm looking at different cars or whatever. There's that, you know, if somebody sends me that handwritten note, I'm definitely, I'm going to be like, oh, I'm probably going to like that car a little bit better. (laughs) Or if I'm like looking for a realtor, you know what I mean? And there's that one who sends me the handwritten note, I'm going to be like, oh, oh, that was so nice. Like you just, it just makes it so much easier to decide (laughs) My, you know, because at the end of the day, money, of course, is is a factor for people. But really, like what they're going to get out of it is the most important part because they'll spend what they need to spend if they know that they're going to get that result. And if you if you have that feeling of like, wow, this person really cares about me getting the result I need, you're just like, and that just it, it, that just does it. I I would be. I know that if I got that, I would be super excited. <laughs> and you know, even if for some reason, like even if they do figure out it's a. a uh, mechanically written note, which they, you know, 99 out of a hundred times they won't, but even if, even if they do, it's still a nice gesture to go b- above and beyond and not just, you know, email them or text totally. them. Or, you know what I mean? It's still like, like when you receive, if you're one of those people that receives a Christmas card from the president, like, do you really think Obama or Trump or Biden sat down and wrote you a Christmas card? Of course not. But a lot of those people still frame that thing. You know, it's the same thing. They, they know it's not real, but it's still something special. Yes, absolutely. I love that. (laughs) If you're listening to this podcast, I'm guessing you fall into one of these categories. You're an entrepreneur, a small business owner, an online marketer, or maybe an agency owner. I'm also guessing that you want new leads who are excited to buy from you. Am I right? Would you be excited to generate five new leads a day? 10, a hundred, maybe even hundreds? Do you even know where to begin to do that? Well, I can tell you this, it doesn't begin with wishing and waiting, but it does begin with a successful lead funnel. 
If you want to have an endless stream of hot leads coming into your pipeline, you'll want to check out the five day lead challenge where you'll learn step by step the high level strategy to generate leads on demand for your specific business. You'll learn how to build your lead magnet that attracts these leads to you in the coolest way I've seen yet. You'll also learn how to take these people and then turn them into your dream leads. You'll also learn how to follow up with them and how to launch this funnel without having to spend any money. Sounds pretty cool, right? Can I make it even cooler? Okay, here it goes. It's all free, all free. Yes, you can learn all of this for free. So if you're ready to get access to this free five-day challenge, head over to thedrawshop.com forward slash five day. Thedrawshop.com forward slash the number five and day. See there. Well, I have a question. So when is the, it's, it's, I don't know if people are thinking of this, but asking, asking for the mailing address. Cause right now you can, you know, some people could look it up if they're speaking to a business, but then so many people are working from home. What is like, what is the good way to ask so that you know where to send it? That's a great question. I wish I had an answer for that. I think <laughs> um, honestly, like when I'll do it, like after this call, I'll ask you for your mailing address to, send you a thank you note for being on your show. And if you say, hey, I wanna send you a handwritten note, you know, if most people are gonna be like, oh, sure, you know, I don't get those any, every day. So um, in fact, I think most people only get like two to three handwritten notes a month now. Uh, you know, how many yeah. emails have you gotten while recording this podcast? So, right. <laughs> uh, you know, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, that's what I do. I just ask them, luckily, depending on your industry, if you're, financial services or realtor, you have that information. If you're an online store, this is one way that online brands are really beating offline brands is just because they have all that data unless they're, you know, in a loyalty program or something. But yeah, like, and, and we do send to a lot of businesses and it gets there eventually. It's not, you know, I guess it's called snail mail for a reason, but uh, you know, it, it does eventually end up there if you just have their, if, if you just have their business address. But I think, you know, if you tell somebody, hey, I just wanted to send you a handwritten thank you, most people are pretty, pretty open to that. Yeah. Or if you just say, I want to send you something. Right. <laughs> There's right. like, oh, cool. What's it going to be? Yeah. yeah. And they're like, oh, it's a handwritten thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, oh, well, okay. But if you want to include a $5 Starbucks card or, you know, Amazon card or something, you could easily do that with it so that if you do raise their expectation, you can, uh, you know, you can temper that a little bit too. So, uh, but we like to think that the handwritten note is kind of the gift. The other, the Starbucks card is the commodity, but you know, it's the beauty's in the eye of the beholder, of course. So if you are somebody who is in sales and you are doing phone sales, for example, and you're, you're talking on the phone to people and you want to put this into your process, but you're busy because you're putting together proposals or whatever it is that you're doing. And it might be, you know, it might be hard to add this extra step. What are ways that you can automate? Because I know that you, you know, this can automate in different CRMs. We talked about um, Zapier as well. How does that work? Yeah, so a couple ways with our, our biggest or deepest integration, I should say, is with Salesforce. So if you're using Salesforce, you can go to the Salesforce app exchange and, and install the handwritten add-in to Salesforce. And what that'll do is Salesforce kind of breaks everything up into contacts, opportunities, accounts, and leads. So on all those pages, like the contact page where you see all your contacts, it'll add a send, send handwritten note button. And then when you click it, it'll walk you through, you know, choosing a stationary. And oh, by the way, you can go to handwritten.com. I don't want to make this too much of an ad for us, but you can go to handwritten.com, create a stationary, like with your logo. And then when you go back into Salesforce, it'll, your logo stationary will be there. Um, and then what's cool about it is after you send that note and maybe include a gift card or something, it'll get recorded back to the activity tab in Salesforce. So then you'll see exactly, okay, on Tuesday, I sent them uh, an email on Wednesday, I met them for lunch. On Thursday, I followed up with a handwritten note, you know, thanking them. 
So it's nice that you have that activity record within Salesforce. We do the similar thing for HubSpot CRM. and That's what we use. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, it's not as great as Salesforce just because HubSpot kind of limits you in the user interface. So, But it, it kind of accomplishes the same thing. And then we also are adding a Shopify one. But in addition to those, we kind of have these hands off through Zapier or Zapier, or however you pronounce it. And you could set up the same thing and depending on your CRM system, have it record back to the activities if your CRM system kind of allows it. It's just more, when you, when you go to, to Zapier, it's kind of more of a trust thing because you don't see it happening. It's just like, okay, I'm going to move something to this stage in my pipeline and I trust it's going to send a handwritten note. So, right. um, you know, and then you'll get the email confirmation and all that. So you will know that it, it went out. But yeah, so we ended, that, that's kind of what we do a lot of, you know, for auto dealerships, we take data feeds. So they'll send us a CSV file of, it's funny, when you buy a car, I had no idea until we started working with car dealers. When you buy a car, they just throw your data everywhere, which is, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. And it, it, but, you know, anyway, so, so they'll send you, they'll send us your data. We'll send handwritten notes out and they won't have to do anything. It's just all through old school um, data file transfers and stuff like that. But for the most part, you know, we integrate with popular CRMs and Zapier and, and all that stuff. So, um, and it's, you know, if you're doing a lot of it, we can do a bulk discount type thing. And, and, you know, we, we try to keep it all very cost effective because automated stuff can get expensive kind of quickly. Yeah. I, I love it. I love it so much. So starting this business, what's, what was the, what was the biggest challenge? That's a great question. So what happened was I had just sold sell it ironically my last company was called sell it because c-e-l-l like cell phone Uh oh yes Um, and i know you're in san diego right yes yeah it was formulated on pacific beach i started okay uh i was there at a weird time that's a whole nother story one best told over beers but anyway (laughs) i sold sell it i actually changed the name of the company to sold it because I, I sold it and I, it was an asset sale. So I had, I sold the name of the company too. Um, and then I like literally the next day started handwritten, which was a mistake. I should have given myself a break, but I, the way that worked is I bought these two handwriting machines from a company in Virginia that kind of work, but when you scale and you end up needing more and more of them, they're just not manageable. They're they'll like write on themselves and you need a lot of laptops around because each robot can only work. You can only have 10 robots per laptop and the handwriting didn't look that authentic. And it just, it was a half in the company wasn't very useful or wasn't very supportive in, in us. You know, like when we needed more machines, they weren't very fast to deliver them and, and everything else. So I decided, well, I guess we're going to have to build our own handwriting robot. <laughs> and you're just like, okay, I have no idea how to start that. But that process took like two and a half years, something like that. We had some false starts. I, I first hired a guy from JPL, like Jet Propulsion Labs, you know, like they just landed a rover on Mars two days ago or whatever. Oh, I, hired wow. guy, I hired a guy from there to help. And all he did was hand me back this complete disaster that smelled like weed. Like <laughs> it was a, like a night project for, you know, he was, he was moonlighting for me and he was like, here you go. And, he, and I got it back and not only did it not work, but it stunk like weed. Oh um, my gosh. I, I found another company to kind of help me design the um, mechanics of it based, based out here in, in Phoenix where I am. And, And luckily I found the right company and and we came up with a prototype and then it really became kind of cool because that machine was made out of all aluminum, CNC aluminum, which was really, it is really kind of expensive to do and slow to do because you, you can't just like make parts for one machine. You have to make the same part like 50 times to get down that cost curve. Yeah. So we were like, okay, well, instead of, you know, how can we do this without doing that? And I just hired an engineer to help 
assemble them in, inside our office. And he said, well, this box hanging off the, the robot, that box alone costs $400. I could 3D print it for $7. And then I said, well, that's awesome. How much is the 3D printer? He said, $400. I said, do it, you know, because we could pay for that 3D printer in one part on one machine. So we started that and then we said, well, this is perfect. Let's, what else can we 3D print? We started 3D printing everything. And we started with this $400 3D printer off Amazon and we quickly switched over to industrial grade 3D printers that were much better quality and all that. But the problem is it's not the right solution for everything. And, and we were, you know, a lot of the pieces we were making are just these big flat pieces. And I'm like, why are we 3D printing these? It's taking a week and a half to make these specific parts. Why don't we just cut it out of plastic? So we um, then went out and bought a laser cutter and we started cutting the parts, the flat parts out of plastic, reducing the time on those parts from a week and a half to 15 minutes. So we were able to get down this curve really quickly. And it was, it was, that was kind of the biggest, the biggest thing was just kind of working through how to get our own handwriting robot. And, and now our handwriting robot is absolutely best of class. And, you know, it's just like a thousand times better than the system we were using out of Virginia. Oh, wow. That's so it's, Gosh, it's that's if, anybody, if anybody ever comes to Phoenix after this this COVID ends, um, we give tours because well, I'll be there. I'll want a tour. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's weird to see a company that's totally vertically integrated. You know, like I mean, software companies are, I guess, but but like physical, you know, companies that make stuff. Like we make the things that make the things and. It's, uh, you know, back in Henry Ford's day, sure, that was done. Now it's, it's not done anymore, but we're doing it. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. It's so, it's so awesome. It's so fascinating. What's been like the really great thing and the really hard thing for this last year for you? That's another great question. So um, I'm full of them. <laughs> and so I don't know how it was for you with COVID. Did you guys fare okay? Or were you, did you have to downsize or anything like that? We didn't actually, we actually, we actually hired more on our team. It was interesting. It was, it was different types, not different, but like a, an addition of clients and companies because people needed more things to be explained to, you know, especially in the bigger companies, this is how we're going to be working now. This is how, you know, this is what we need to communicate to our customers now. So it was actually, we got to fulfill a need. But it was interesting. Awesome. It was kind of, you know, there were quiet times. There were super busy times. It was just a very different kind of a year. But it also got us to launch different different services at the same time. So it was, I would say at the end, it was it was a good thing. I mean, not it wasn't a good thing for everyone. But I mean, it wasn't it wasn't yeah, like a yeah, bad sure, thing sure. for business. Yeah. Sure. Sure. No, I understand. Uh, <laughs> you know, headlines. Uh, Summer says COVID is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, COVID was great. <laughs> yeah. um, for us, it was tough, you know, we, because we couldn't really, like my account management department, my sales people, my graphic designers, they could all go virtual. But, you know, the physical notes had to be written in a facility. So we shut down in like March of last year for two weeks because we didn't really know how to grapple with all that. And I didn't want my employees to get sick and, you know, it was weird. And then we slowly came back and left people virtual, you know, that where we could, and we spaced everybody out as much, but it was difficult because like, you know, we had a lot of notes to write, but if we could only keep people on two shifts and spaced out a certain amount, it was hard to, you know, not to go beyond our capacity. But I think after a while, at least in Arizona, I think California is much more strict in Arizona, everybody just kind of gave up <laughs> and yeah. um, a lot, I mean, we walk around the office with masks on and we've got thermometer checks everywhere and hand sanitizer stations. So we're doing everything we can do, but you know, you come in our office and it's, a, you know, it's not that different than business as usual now. And, and by the end of the year, business picked back up and December was our best month ever 
but there were some definitely slow months in between where, and part of it might, was my doing for shutting the company down and all that. But um, yeah, it was, it's, it's, it was definitely a interesting time for sure. And I had to, I had to lay people out or uh, furlough people for a few weeks, which was difficult. And uh, yeah, it, 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 it wasn't easy. And I, I, I fully can commiserate with what everybody's going through. Yeah, definitely. Very, very interesting times, but I, um, I think there's definitely opportunity in all, you know, not just in business, but personally relationships, all of that. If, yeah. if you look for it, if you're open for it. Yeah. I mean, we were calling our, our clients just saying, you know, what can we do for you? Handwritten note related or not, you know, like yeah. how can we be of service? You've been of, you know, you've trusted us over the years. What can we do for you? Um, we were just, you know, trying to keep those relationships alive during all this. So, yeah. And I think, you know, our business kind of like yours kind of flourished near the end because people saw handwritten outreach as a way to show that they cared to their, their customers and prospects and all that. So, um, but come December, everything was, was insanely busy, probably not the safest environment in our office, but we were doing our absolute best to, to stay distant and everything like that. But um, it was incredibly busy with the handwritten notes we were sending out. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. Well, I'm, I have to tell you that I'm super excited. I'm not just saying it, this because I'm, <laughs> I'm promoting you as a guest or anything like that, but I love this idea so much. And um, I definitely want to implement it just because, you know, if anything, like you said, not even just, you know, to get the sale or, or anything like that, but really just to always communicate like that, that we care on a different level than just a quick follow-up email. I really, I, I, I just love it. And I know how I feel about getting a personalized note. So I can only imagine, you know, especially when you're working with clients, like in our business where you, you're going to have a longer term relationship with them. So to start it off on, on that note, no pun intended is, is awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe well, I did intend that. <laughs> hey, come work for us. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, that's exactly it. And, you know, it's just, people are always trying to stand out and like, uh, we got, I got in the mail from actually a company from San Diego. They were, I guess, trying to woo, woo me or something as a client of theirs in, in the SEO space or something. And they sent me this box and I opened it up and it looked like kind of like a thick greeting card. And then I opened up the greeting card and on one side was this video display and it was playing some baloney propaganda for them, you know, XYZ Corp, blah, blah, blah. And I, all I could do is I was looking at this thing and I'm like, okay, so first of all, I want to know how this works because I'm an engineer and an engineer and all that. So I'm like thinking about that. I'm completely not paying attention to the message, but I am also thinking, how much does this thing cost them, you know, to send this? This is probably 20 bucks each to send these things out because they're trying to get noticed, trying to be different. Maybe they should just send a handwritten note, you know, and I, yeah. I actually <laughs> contacted the company and said, gee, you know, instead of sending these gimmicks, that like, how many times are you going to watch this stupid video on, you know, this propaganda video? Maybe if it included some draw shop videos, I'd be more inclined to watch. <laughs> This thing was so boring. You know, I'd turn it off after three seconds or whatever. How many times am I going to watch that? Like, was that really worth $20? To, and then plus FedEx fees to ship it to me versus just $3 plus a postage to send out a handwritten note, you know, and yeah. that you know, would have absolutely gotten read versus this baloney thing. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And, you know, one thing that I wasn't thinking about, and you mentioned it earlier was for promotions. I love that as well. You know, if you have special offers going on, like around the holidays, what a, what a great way to really, because so many people are marketing at that time, you really stand out by getting a physical note instead of, you know, just an email and an email every single day, you know, saying yeah, this exactly. is about to end, this is about to end, which is fine. But getting that first, you know, note is just, it's so great. So I'm already a fan and I haven't even started using it, but I'll, I'll have to report back to the audience of, of how, it, how it works for us. <laughs> right. Please do. I love it. Well, David, thank you so much. I, I can't wait to actually see you in person, listeners, in case um, I, don't, I don't think we talked about it, but we're, um, I, I talk about Genius Network often on this show. So David is um, a member as of this year. And so I'm, I'm so excited because there's so many phenom phenomenal entrepreneurs in the group. And we 
we now have you. So this is amazing. Thank you so, so much. Let me tell listeners where they can go. I'm sure they figured it out, but they don't know the spelling. Um, why don't you tell them where they can go to get more information on handwritten? Yeah, it's uh, handwritten, but it's spelled with a Y. So it's H-A-N-D-W-R-Y-T-T-E-N.com. If you go there, there's a business tab. It's the first tab over. Click that and get some free samples sent to you. Or if you sign up, sign up with an email and password, not through Google or Facebook and use sign up code podcast. And that'll get you five bucks in credit. So you can try it yourself and send yourself a note or send a friend a note or whatever, and just get a feel of the system. So yeah. And then if you have any questions, just, you know, reach out to us handwritten on Twitter or, you know, find me on LinkedIn. I'm the only David that works at handwritten and we'd be happy to help you. Sweet. Awesome. Thank you so much. So and much. as always, we'll have all of that listed in the show notes. Thank you, David. And I hope to see you soon. Thanks, Summer. See you at the next Genius Network. All right. Hey, guys, I just want to say thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you haven't already done so, would you do me a favor and go subscribe and review this podcast? My goal is to continue to deliver you content that will really move the revenue needle in your business and give you up-to-date content on anything else that can dramatically help your business. You can also find us at thedrawshop.com slash podcast where you can comment on the podcast or contact us directly with any issues you'd like me to address. Thanks again. I really, really appreciate you listening and I'll see you next time.